It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Oh, oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a Finish Strong Friday presented, of course, by DraftKings. It's also a Winner's Friday, but I'm going to keep you on your toes. I'm going to tell you who the winners are in about 10 minutes because I want to talk to my guy, Paulie Paps from the Dan Patrick Show, right now. It's Big Show time. The Big Show. Every once in a while, we got to change the format up a little bit just to keep you guys guessing. It's exactly two hours before I will be on his show, the Dan Patrick Show. Polly Pabst, of course, longtime producer and on air. I don't know what Danette for the Dan Patrick Show, literally walking around the studio while we're talking to him right now. Polly, it's funny because I specifically wanted you on today. Tuesday, I had a mental health. Issue. Wednesday, I had. Mike Tannenbaum to do the front office stuff. Yesterday, I had Greg Cosell to break down the film. To me, you are the epitome of the everyman. And I hope you take that as a compliment. Yeah, because like, Ross, you could be the everyman, but you play in the NFL. And that takes you away from that. You (laughs) feel like the everyman now. But I'm the C student. We had a motto in college at Southern Illinois. C's did to get degrees. I had a 2.12 grade point average and I ended up working on the Dan Patrick show. So the message to you kids out there is anybody can make it. <laughs> so in all sincerity, I never really asked you, by the way, how, what, how did you get that job? Like how, how um, are you where you are? I'll make the summary. I was at Southern Illinois university for about five and a half years. You know, it took me a long time to get out of there, but I got a lot of education. I actually met Dan Patrick. He did a, a Murray state Southern Illinois game. We invited him back to our fraternity house. And I'm going to a different party. But, uh, you know, I studied uh, sports media, ended up in New York City for about five years at CBS Sports, working with Jay Glazer, was one of my first bosses in the research department, working with Jim Nance and those guys. I worked for two years at ESPN, working on college game day and NFL shows, uh, ESPN Network Radio. And Dan Patrick needed a producer. And his old producer was a pretty good friend of mine and put in a word for me. And Dan walked up to me in the hallway, and I know, only knew Dan a little bit. I met him probably two or three times at ESPN Network Radio, but, you know, he was big time, is big time, was big time. But at ESPN, I was as low on the totem pole as you could get. I wouldn't really go up and bother Dan Patrick. So when he came up to me and said, hey, let's chat, um, mm-hmm. he goes, well, why don't we go get a beer after work? He goes, where do you live? I said, Milford, Connecticut. He goes, that's where I live. I go, I know where you live. You got the big house. And uh, I went over to his house. We had uh, – couple of beers and he goes you want to do this and I was like are you kidding yeah I mean and it was pretty surreal I can remember going back to my dopey little apartment in Milford Connecticut going you know eight years ago Dan Patrick was uh blowing us off at Southern Illinois to come have beers with us and now as producer and so even now once in a while I'll be driving going I can't believe I'm here and so that, that's kind of a good attitude to have I think that uh that is awesome story I can't believe I never heard that before I love that all right um, here's what I wanted to get you on a, a million different reasons, but is this the best football weekend of the year you represent to me when I'm, when I fill in for Dan and when I like, you have a great, like 30,000 foot perspective of things. You have like the pulse of the fans. I would say yeah. is, this, is divisional round of the NFL in your opinion, the best football weekend. I made the case last week that I thought wildcard weekend was the new best weekend of football. And then it really let me down like real bad. Well, I think leading into wildcard weekend, you know, especially with that added Monday night game on Friday, you're thinking to yourself, Holy cow. I got Saturday, seven or eight hours of football Sunday, 10 hours of football and then bonus coverage on Monday. And, you know, as a husband and father, you got to be on your toes. Like on Friday, I'm taking my wife out to dinner. I'm making sure the weekend is clear, you know, maybe buy or something, take care of the kids on Friday, get up in the morning and do any errands you have. But yes, it is as, as a fan of of sports. I think this weekend's a little better because there's nobody who shouldn't be here. Sometimes wildcard weekend, someone will slide in and won't put up a great effort, you know, and I think the Eagles were a good team, but that game was a, was a disappointment and they're not a bad team. They just, 
no showed on that game. But this weekend, it's like, okay, you know, you have eight fan bases that have a chance. And you start thinking to yourself, I'm a Bears fan, so I have nobody in the fight. But if you're in playing this weekend, you're thinking, I might have my team in the Super Bowl, whether they deserve it or not. So I, I'm always biased, right? Because I played. So I, I like to recluse myself from some of these conversations. But you're a guy, you like baseball, you like basketball, you <clears> like <throat> hockey. Why do you think football is so popular? Well, beyond the obvious, uh, well, a couple of reasons. Um, football is something the average person can't do. I mean, on, on, a, on a high level. I'm six foot 190. I'm the same size as an NFL defensive back. In a million years, I can't physically do what they do for a living. Take that kind of punishment. It's, it's really um, a unique sport because most people don't play football. You know, you can, I, anyone can play pickup basketball. You can go to the batting cage and hit, hit baseballs if you want. Um, but I think that's what's the great thing about the sport is, is what you guys do, the physical toll you take and give out, the average human cannot um, even consider doing. And you guys take it for granted. And and a total separate thing that was great about football, the structure. You There's never enough football. You know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you're waiting for it. And then you have all weekend and you have all these games. But they, the, the structure of football always keeps you wanting more football on TV. And so you throw in a Monday night game and people still want it. Um, baseball, there's 162 games. You can miss your team playing for an entire week and you really didn't miss much. You know, NBA, you could miss the first two quarters of a game and you didn't maybe miss that much. It's just not like that football. Yeah, and I think, too, it's like appointment viewing. It's like, you know, Sunday at 1 or Sunday at 4, that's when your yes. team plays, you're going to watch. Whereas NBA, they just play like every night. So it's like you can't, you just can't do that. You just can't you can't make that many appointments. In, in the real world with jobs and kids and stuff, you just can't make that commitment to the other sports. Yeah, and you know, I, I'm college football is probably my overall favorite sport. But the thing about college football, the structure is a lot more wonky. There's games on Thursday. You don't know what time your team's playing this weekend. If I, if I was ever in charge of college football, I'd give it a lot more structure because that's the one thing it lacks: the pomp and circumstance and tailgate. You know, I think they beat the NFL and that kind of stuff. But for the structure, for the consumer, for the viewer, it's not as good as the NFL. So you and I both. Because I, I see your tweets, you see mine, we tag each other sometimes. We both love food. Obviously, it's a meat Friday on the Dan Patrick Show today, sure. which I'll be on at, at 920. We both love beer. Why does it feel like beer and food go with football? Although, I guess, you know, when you go to a baseball game, you get a hot dog and a beer, too. But it really feels like those things go with football. Maybe it's because football is more of a tailgate sport. I don't know. It's the tailgating. You know, if you think about it, um, if it were a Tuesday morning at home, I probably wouldn't have two bratwursts and a beer at 9.45 a.m. That's not conducive to the normal human diet. But it, for some reason, it feels right if there's a smoker and there's a football game. You know, if you go to Wisconsin, if you're Wisconsin, you're two brats in by 10 a.m. You're two beers in by 10 a.m. That's not normal human living. But once you morph into that tailgate life all rules are off i mean you're, you're just like me man you're you're a, a guy who thinks when's the next meal how do i plan for the next meal like when i go to a tailgate i always think don't overeat too early sample some stuff sample some beers but you want to be in for the long haul you see those guys passed out in, at a tailgate at six o'clock and the game's not until seven amateur hour but yeah meat beer football it, it, it just it's perfect together because of the tailgate structure all right, I got two more quick ones. One is kind of a weird question to ask, but, you know, uh, I get recognized the most or I get probably the most comments on the Dan Patrick show. Like, you know, if I'm in an airport or something, probably because, you know, my podcast stuff is more audio. It's, you know, there's not as many people watching YouTube, but Dan Patrick has been very video-based over the years. You guys have me on seemingly every week. I fill in for Dan all the time. Um, weird question to ask, I guess, but yeah. why? Like, why do you guys have me on so much? Why do you have me fill in? Um, well, I I'm can very tell you, appreciative. I can tell you two parts of this. First of all, the reason we have you on and almost any guest is if you could tell us good stories. Anybody, honestly, can break down the Bucks versus the Niners, right? Or the Packers versus the Niners. Not anybody, but some are better than others. But you, whenever we go to you, you always tell us a story. You don't say, you don't talk about it in a vague way. Whenever we have John Smoltz on or Chris Weber, they tell us a story and they have it ready quickly. 
And Dan and the guys, people on the show, I think love that. I think it's way better than like when we asked you about um, peeing on the sidelines. You tell us a detailed story of how to have it. Chris Weber, when we have him on, hey, what was it like playing against Michael Jordan? He goes, well, I was in the loading dock at uh, Chicago Bulls Stadium. Michael Jordan's sitting there on top of a Lamborghini with a $5,000 suit of cigar on. He goes, we were all like, oh, my God, it's Michael Jordan. So those stories are so great. And I think the reason after people like you come on the show that they get recognized by the fans is what we do, Dan and the guys on the show and the structure of the show, we want you to show your personality. We want you to tell stories. We want you to be more than just an analyst who has 30 seconds to break down that play. And so we'll have people on the show like well, Patrick Ewing has been on the show a bunch of times. And Patrick Ewing in the old days had a reputation for being standoffish and difficult to media. We tried to get under that and have Patrick tell stories. And now we'll run into Patrick Ewing and have him on the show. He's like, people come up to me all the time and say, I loved you on the Dan Patrick show. Why didn't you love me before? Because we want you to bring your personality out and let people know who you are. That's so funny. I forgot to tell you this, by the way. And you could have Dan ask me out today. During the Rams-Cardinals game Monday night, one of the uh, equipment guys on the Cardinals sideline came over to me. I, I sit down during the breaks because of my back. Right. So I'm sitting on like the luxuries, like there's like these field level boxes. So I'm sitting on like their like protective area. Some guy came over to me with a Gatorade towel and he's <laughs> like, here you go. Do you need this? I'm like, what? Like, I, I thought like I was doing something wrong. He's like, I heard you on the Dan Patrick show. Do you need this Gatorade towel? I'm like, no, no, I peed at halftime. I'm good, man. I don't need it. It's the best. We love when people from this show get recognized and get talked to. It's awesome. Last question. What interests you most this weekend? Biggest storyline of the four NFL games. Is it Stafford? Is it Bills Chiefs? What what is it? Um I always look towards the story of the result, the fallout of a loss. Like you know, if the Rams don't win this week, if the Rams had lost last week, and that would have been a big deal. You know, they would have not advanced very far. If the Rams lose to Tom Brady, I don't think it's that big of a deal. If it, you know, if um, the Titans, you know, that, that there's not fallout. If somehow the Packers lay an egg, oh. and, and Jimmy Garoppolo, which is hard to picture in your head, but if, if somehow Garoppolo outplays, even by this much Aaron Rodgers, the fallout of that game will go on for months. And so that's to me, as a producer, I root for stories, not teams. And I don't want the Packers to lose. I actually like the Packers quite a bit. But from the fallout standpoint, the Packers losing that game would be the uh, the juiciest thing. It's a great point. His name is Paul Pabst. Uh, I think a lot of you are probably familiar with In the weight room. him and the show. You got to check him out on social media, at Paul Pabst, P-A-B-S-T, just like the beer. Yeah, uh, He is the everyman, awesome guy. Thank you so much, Paulie, for 10 minutes. Really appreciate Ross, it. Ross, anytime. We got to get the convertible. We got to go on that brewery meat tour. We got to get it going. Oh, that would be incredible. Thanks, Paulie. Later, bud. Gosh, that was awesome. I knew it would be. Uh, you know what else is awesome? LinkedIn. In particular, LinkedIn Jobs. You can create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 770 million people. Listen, I told you guys this before. I've got three small businesses that I'm part of, right? RT Media, which is the podcast business, myfrontpagestory.com, greatest Valentine's Day gift of all time, and Go Big Recruiting for high school athletes, right? Any of the interns that I have from Penn State, they're all on LinkedIn. They are all over LinkedIn. Young people eat up LinkedIn. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. I actually talk to these kids. They, they recommend posting clips from this show on LinkedIn because it's a great way to get uh, people to, to see what we're doing. It's unbelievable. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash Ross. That's linkedin.com slash Ross to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Tux takes. 
Good morning, Ross. A couple of quick notes before we get to the game picks. Let's start with Chiefs linebacker Willie Gay, future Chief Damon Arnett, and Antonio Brown talking about his mental health. I know you wanted to touch on all three of those topics. Right, and we will, by the way, announce the winners later on in the show. It's still a winner's Friday. I just like to keep you guys on your toes every once in a while. Probably, I bet you there's a couple of you that try to fast forward through the first minute or two. Nope, can't do it. You never know. You never know. So, uh, yeah, Willie Gay was arrested for uh, misdemeanor uh, criminal property damage. I guess there was some type of argument with his uh, significant other or girlfriend or the, the mother of a child, something like that. And he broke the vacuum cleaner, which is valued at less than $1,000. All I know is Spagnolo was asked if Willie Gay was going to play in the game, and he said that's up to Coach Reed. So I would imagine he plays, but I suppose you never know. Interesting timing, by the way, of that, because on the same day, the Chiefs signed Damon Arnett to a futures contract. Uh, I actually got signed to a, No, I didn't actually. I was going to get signed to a futures contract, but I didn't because the Patriots ended up signing me for the rest of the year. But a futures contract is when they sign you after the season, but before the new league year starts. So Damon Arnett is not signed for the Chiefs for the playoffs. They have him under contract for next year. Remember, Arnett was a surprising Raiders first-round pick a year ago that had uh, some videos came out that were extremely inappropriate. So the note here is if you've got talent, you'll always get a second chance. Uh, another note is that the Chiefs are very willing to give people second chances. And the last thing is the Chiefs are going for the Super Bowl. Their third straight Super Bowl appearance, their second Super Bowl win last three years, and Brett Veach already working on and working towards next year. Things like that I absolutely make note of and I think are significant. I really do. I think that that says something about something. Want to know which team is going to win every single game on Sunday? Then listen up. So, Bri, I just realized I forgot to mention the Antonio Brown thing. You kind of hit on, hit on it. But there was a couple articles yesterday that referenced Jimmy Stewart on the show on Tuesday, on this show, talking about Antonio Brown's mental health. And so Antonio Brown went on some podcast and was asked about it. And he said, there's nothing wrong with my mental health. Every time something happens, somebody says that there's nothing wrong with it. So I don't know. I, I'll, I'll let you guys be the judge. Uh, but what did Jimmy say? You know, people, people need to, uh, people need, People need to want to help, uh, and it takes a bunch of bottoms to finally ask for and want the help. So we'll see. Maybe there's not a mental health issue with Antonio Brown, but clearly the experts that I've read and literally talked to disagree. Let's get to these games, Brian. All right, first up, Cincinnati at Tennessee. Really interesting, by the way, because I – uh, you know, Greg said yesterday's show that somebody in Nashville told him Derrick Henry's going to get 20-plus carries. They're going to run their normal offense. Bengals fans are are feeling themselves. I mean, they hadn't won a playoff game in 30 years, and Bengals fans are now like, yeah, we'll see if that continues when they're down 14 nothing." I mean, it, I love it. I actually love I'm not mocking you, Bengals fans. I love that you're feeling it. I love that you're like this. I'm glad. I, I, you should be feeling yourselves a little bit. Go for it. So that's awesome. Love it. Uh, so anyway, um, I think this is a tough one for the Bengals. The good news is they're getting Trey Hendrickson back, which I think is significant. The bad news is, you know, they're still don't have Larry Ogunjobi. And I, I think the Bengals are going to lose this game up front. I think the front four of the Titans is going to dominate the Bengals' offensive line and get after Joe Burrow. I think it's going to be a long day 
for Joey Franchise, which I guess is the nickname we're actually going with. I liked Joe Swag, Brian. I think Joey Swags is pretty cool. Joey Swags, but it seems like people. It seems like Joey Franchise is pretty far down the line. Although, isn't there already? Hasn't there already been other people that their last name is Franchise, like their nicknames Franchise? I don't know, but I'm I'm okay with Joey Franchise. I like it. I like Joey Franchise, yeah, but I feel like there have been other people that have been franchised. I, I, I think Joey Swags is better. Joey Swags. Um, that's more unique. At any rate, I just think the Titans D-line, you know, those guys, Danico Autry, Jeffrey Simmons, Landry, I mean, they got some serious dudes. And Bengals O-line's been okay. You know, they, they hung in there against the Raiders a little bit. I just think this group is going to be voracious ferocious and I think they're going to dominate up front on the other side I think Derrick Henry does play a lot and I do think they pound the Bengals who will be without Ogan Joby and I think the Bengals run out of a little bit of steam here not as much as the Niners but I, I think the Titans end up winning pretty good game I hope I think it's like 24-17 the Titans win something like that maybe by about a touchdown 24 24- 17, 24, 20, perhaps. But ultimately, I expect the Titans to move on. What a bad look that would be for them if they if they didn't. But I think they will. 24, 20, Titans. Yeah, the game on Saturday, San Francisco at Green Bay. And actually, Bri, I don't see the Titans losing that game. Lock them up. Lock up. If I had to lock up one team, it would be the Titans. Your survivor slash knockout slash whatever you call it, pick of the week. Niners, Packers. So I've kind of, those of you who listen to Even Money podcast, you know this. I've kind of gone back and forth on this one this week. I think on some level, the Niners are just a bad matchup for the Packers. I think Shanahan is sort of a a step ahead of Matt LaFleur and his defensive coordinators, whether that was Mike Pettin or Joe Barry. It just feels like Shanahan's been a step ahead of those guys. They probably should have won the regular season meeting. You know, the 40 seconds, Rodgers is able to get a field goal. And I think the Packers are better now, but I think the Niners are better now too. The prop, and by the way, it looks as if Fred Warner, Nick Bosa are going to play. Jimmy G's going to play, but there are some statistics that indicate he was not as good in the second half of that game against the Cowboys as he was in the first half. And evidently, he suffered the shoulder injury at the end of the first half. So that is something to note. Ultimately, Packers, now look, it sounds like Bakhtiari still might not play, which is not good. And and, and Valdez Scantling's doubtful. But the Packers are still, it looks like getting back Jair Alexander, Sedarius Smith. And I think the Niners, the amount of energy and effort they've had to expend to come from behind against the Rams week 18, to beat the Cowboys against the Packers team that really has been, you know, they didn't play last week. They didn't really play in the second half of that Lions game. It just feels like a lot for the Niners to be able to overcome. I'm going to take the Packers, but I wouldn't be surprised at all if the Niners won this game. I just, I cannot imagine how bad it would be for Packer Nation if they lost this game. I mean... It's hard to imagine Aaron Rodgers being back if they lost this game. I just think he would say, it's just not happening for me in Green Bay. So I'm going to say the Packers win. I think it's a pretty good game. I think it's 27-20 Green Bay. I I, I laid the points on the Even Money podcast, so I'm going to stay consistent. 27-20 Packers. I think... I feel like the Niners have the lead in the first half and the Packers pull away in the second. That's my story. I'm sticking with it. On Sunday, Rams at the Bucks, and you're going to be there, aren't you? 
I am going to be there. Can't wait. I could use that warm weather. It's freezing in Pennsylvania right now. And should be a really fun game. Really fun game. You know, it's funny, Bri. I Here's how I feel about this game. I think the Rams might have the better team right now. I wouldn't be surprised at all if the Rams win the game. Here's the deal, though. I think it's going to be a close game. And if it's a close game late, I am going to take Thomas, Edward, Patrick, Brady over Matthew, whatever his middle name is, Stafford. That's what I'm going to do. Because in a close game, I've got more faith in 12 than I do in 9. It would be a tremendous story for Stafford if he beat Brady. I think the Rams are playing better right now. I think the Rams are healthier. The injuries to Werfs and Jensen are concerning. Shaq Barrett and Levante David didn't look healthy to me for the Bucs. I, I, I just think the Bucs are a beat-up team. The Rams are a healthier team. I think whoever wins up front will win the game. But I think it's a close game. And I'm not – what I say for my game picks is what I would do with my money. I'm not picking Matthew Stafford over Tom Brady in a close playoff game until I see that actually happen. 24-23 bucks. Brady goes the length of the field for a game-winning field goal. Nice. All right. And finally, Sunday evening, Buffalo Bills, Kansas City Chiefs. So, um, bef- yeah, I'll, I'll get into this game first, actually. And I'll tell you this. Another game I've gone back and forth on. Three of these games, not I, I've always thought the Titans would win, but the other three, I've gone back and forth on. If this game was in Buffalo, I would pick the Bills. For sure. It's not. It's in Kansas City. Kansas City is very loud. That takes away some of the advantage for the offense with the snap count advantage. And the problem is Kansas City's playing really well, too. You know, I know the Bills are hot. It feels like the Bills might be the best team. It feels like this might be the Bills moment. And you guys know I have an affinity for them. So, gosh, that would be awesome. If that was the case, I would be thrilled for those people and for that region and that organization. But ultimately, I I think the Chiefs probably pulled out the end. I think the home field advantage is the difference. I think if these teams played 10 times, probably five and five on a neutral field. Maybe even Buffalo wins. Arrowhead ain't neutral. 27-24 Chiefs break the hearts of the Buffalo Bills yet again. Speaking of broken hearts... It breaks my heart when people treat their cars like crap. Why? Why do you do that? It's an asset. You spend a lot of time in it. I always think how you like how your car looks is on some level a reflection of who you are. Like, are you the type of person that has your car organized and clean, or is it filthy? Is it a is it a pigsty in there? I don't know. Think about it. They have simple upgrades. Available at AutoZone, like seat covers that prevent spills, tears, rips, and UV rays from ruining your upholstery. Can even help maintain your resale value. Does your car smell like crap? AutoZone has the cleaning products you need to freshen it up. You can get any type of interior upgrade fast. And AutoZone has more ways for you to get it. You know how I feel about the free next day delivery and the free same day store pickup. Make AutoZone your one-stop car interior shop. They carry the best products from the best brands at the right price. Get in the zone. Auto zone. Bri, it's a winner's Friday. I want winners. I want people that want to win. This is weird. We've been doing this show forever. I don't know if we've ever picked the winners at the end of the show. This is wild. I kind of feel like I'm... uh, What's it? What's the line from Wayne's World? Uh, doing the ropes in gym class. What is? What does Garth say? Oh, I, I don't feel know. Like I'm, in a long time. What's that? I haven't seen that in a long time. I can't quote that one. 
he says like i feel like i'm climbing the ropes in gym class like something like that um anyway feels weird and funny to do this at the end so the spread the word winner this week josh shepherdson not only has he quote tweeted the show a number of times i've seen at ross tucker pod and at ross tucker nfl I guess he works for fantasypros.com and wrote a story for fantasypros.com about stuff he heard on our show. Love it, Josh. Come on down, bro. You are in as the spread the word winner. Let me know what you want. Sign picture, sign card. Send me an email, ross at rosstucker.com. Obviously, I got all kinds of press passes. I'll be getting Bucks, Rams, which is awesome. I've got Rams Cardinals from the other night. Sponsor confirmation email winner, Hector Zermino or Zermano. Uh, Hector Zermano, dude, he was on fire. He sent in a keeps sponsor confirmation, a manscape sponsor confirmation. I mean, think about that. My man Hector is getting more hair on top of his head and less hair down below at the exact same time, thanks to us, thanks to our sponsors. Love it. Keeps and Manscaped. Hector, email me your address. I think he asked for a Raiders press pass. But email me your address and confirm you want a Raiders press pass, my man. Hector is the man. And then the YouTube shout-out for this week, Justin Masters. Justin Masters, I noticed that you subscribed. I noticed you made a comment. I noticed these things. Why my wife loves me. I noticed, like, the little things. Your hair looks nice, babe. Oh, I like that shirt. I noticed the little things, fellas. So does, I noticed the YouTube shout out. Let me know, Justin. Email me, ross at rosstucker.com, who you want the YouTube shout out for. I want to give shout outs to Pizza Boy Brewing, Sportaculture, Vision Comics with an X, humanheadnyc.com, and steakhousesports.com. Have an awesome weekend. If you get a chance to listen to me on Saturday or Sunday at all, that'd be amazing. I love when you guys take a picture or a short video of listening to me, that is cool. That's like an automatic retweet. I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker football podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the fantasy feast, even money business of sports and college draft all available at Apple podcasts, Ross Tucker.com or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mentioned DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or in Indiana, 109 with it. By the way, if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, it doesn't always. Sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough, and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit. 